What time is it? What? Why? Wait, what? Why isn't the light working? Is the power off? What's going on? What the heck? Oh, what time is it? What? Wait a second. I'm dreaming. Sleeping is something that we all do, as often as possible if we can help it. And you'd think with as much practice as we get, we would be experts at it by now. But we're not. We actually kind of suck at it. First, we need to get the mandatory disclaimer out of the way. I am not a doctor. I'm also not a clinical psychologist or a dentist. That'll make sense later. Don't take medical advice from a guy on YouTube, okay? Okay. Sleep disorders can be divided up into two categories. First, let's talk about dysomnias, when you have trouble going to sleep, staying asleep, or sometimes even waking up, which is the case for Klein-Levin syndrome, also known as Sleeping Beauty syndrome. This is an extremely rare disorder where you sleep for 20 hours a day, every day, sometimes for weeks at a time. These episodes can sometimes be separated by years. People with this disorder experience insatiable appetites when they're awake, both for food and for naughty time. Most people with this disorder also have a hard time discerning reality from dreaming, and as a result will sometimes just do nothing when they're awake. It's extremely rare, in fact statistically only 22 people in the United States have it, so it's really difficult to figure out what causes it. The leading theory is some sort of viral infection Infection, but there's been at least a dozen different viruses connected to it, so we just don't know. We do know what causes the next one on our list, though, which is far more common. Circadian Rhythm Sleep Disorders There are a few main types with extremely long names, like Delayed Sleep Phase Disorder, Advanced Sleep Phase Disorder, and Non-24-Hour Sleep Wake Disorder. But they're all somewhat the same with minor differences here and there. Your circadian rhythm is the 24-hour sleep-wake cycle, which is built into everyone by evolution and is regulated by light. So how are we messing this up? Well, diet and exercise are usually the main treatments, so that. But even more so, shift work and artificial light, including lamps, TVs, and phones. You have to remember that in terms of human history, all of these things are fairly recent inventions, and we're only now starting to realize how these stupid little things are affecting our brains. Normally, at night, your brain sees that it's dark out and starts to release melatonin, which is the hormone that makes you sleepy. But now we almost always have our homes artificially lit, and we're staring at those stupid little light boxes all the time, which tricks your brain into thinking that the sun is up so it doesn't release melatonin. You might be saying that even cave people lived by campfire and candlelight back in the day, so that doesn't make any sense. And yeah, you're right. But those light sources are comparatively dim and more towards the red end of the light spectrum, whereas these little things and the sky are more blue light. And it's blue wavelength light that your brain uses to regulate melatonin. Somewhat related to this is narcolepsy, when your brain can't regulate your sleep-wake cycle at all, so you fall asleep seemingly at random. I say almost because one of the symptoms is excessive daytime sleepiness, which is basically what it says on the tin. Shout out to the only person who knows why I said it like that. These sleepiness episodes are kind of warning signals of an impending sleep attack and only last a few seconds or minutes. So be sure that your friends are always ready and waiting for a random unannounced trust fall. The opposite of this is probably the most experienced dysomnia. Insomnia, which is the inability to go to sleep or stay asleep. It's often comorbid with other dysomnia disorders such as depression or anxiety, but sometimes physical ailments such as diabetes. We all know what this is like, right? You're laying there, rolling around, thinking about that really ill-timed racist joke you said as a kid, replaying Game of Thrones episodes in your head, planning tomorrow. Just shut up and go to sleep already! But at least you don't have fatal familial insomnia. This is a genetic prion disease, also known as a transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. I just really wanted to say those big words and seem smart. Symptoms don't show up until adult and once you show symptoms, there is no cure, so you only have 18 months left to live. 
18 sleepless months. All the while, your mind is slowly deteriorating. Don't worry too much though, only 100 people in the world have this disease. But someone has to be 101st, right? There are also physical issues which can stop you from getting to sleep as well, such as sleep apnea when you stop breathing. There are two types. Central, which is when your brain just sort of stops telling you to breathe all of a sudden, which is scary. And then obstructive, which is the kind that we all hear when people snore like chainsaws. Sometimes you wake up gasping for breath, and sometimes you don't. Either way, the treatment is to wear one of those creepy Bane masks to sleep. Then there's everyone's favorite sleep disorder to make fun of. Restless leg syndrome. I actually had restless leg syndrome back in the day before there was a pill or even a name for it. It's when you're trying to sleep but you have this insatiable urge to move your legs. You'll never guess this, but the treatment for it before there was a pill anyway was diet and exercise. So now let's get to the second and arguably more fun sleep disorders. Parasomnias, which is when you can get to sleep but you have abnormal behaviors or perceptions. Each one of these can fit into one or two of three subcategories physical, sensory, and conscious. You'll see each one of these light up differently for each one that we talk about, but since we're already on physical issues, let's stick with that. Bruxism is when you unconsciously grind your teeth while you're asleep. You might have no idea that you're doing it, but your dentist does. That hole is not a cavity or a naturally incurring indentation. It's a result of grinding from the opposing tooth. Treatment is pretty simple, it's just a mouth guard. You can get one of those boxing style ones from the store, or you can have your dentist make up a fancy one like this. One of the most common dreams is when you experience lockjaw or your teeth are falling out. If you experience those dreams, you might be grinding your teeth. My second video ever was on dreams, so I'm not going to get too much into the meaning here. If you're doing it in your dream, there is a chance you're doing it in real life. Normally when you're sleeping, your brain paralyzes your body so that you're not swinging around breaking people or things. But it can't paralyze your face, which is why your eyes dart around during REM sleep, you grind your teeth, and sometimes you talk. This is called somniloquy, which is just a fancy word for sleep talking and there isn't much else to say about it. But sometimes that paralyzing mechanism doesn't work and you end up with REM sleep behavior disorder. This isn't just rolling over or repositioning. This is you acting out your dream, punching, kicking, thrashing, and everything else. What time is it? Wait. Oh no, I'm still dreaming. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Whoa, whoa, okay, wait. There might actually be a chance that I'm doing this in real life. No need for the neighbors to call the cops or anything. It'll be alright, the alarm will go off soon, and I'll wake up. Which brings us to somnambulism, or sleepwalking. For REM sleep behavior disorder, you're just kicking and moving around in bed. But for sleepwalking, your eyes are open, you're experiencing gravity and balance, and you're even interacting with people and objects. But you're not conscious. People who sleepwalk have also engaged in naughty times, in which case it's called sexomnia, or even murdered people. And if they have a proven history of sleepwalking, they're usually found innocent. Figure that one out. I'm not sure how I feel about that one, honestly. I mean, you still killed someone. Just because you didn't mean to do it or you weren't conscious doesn't mean you're not still dangerous. Ugh, what time is it? Oh, no, 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 no! Still? Oh, come on, come on, come on. Okay, how can I, how can I get out of this? Uh <laughs> Exploding Head Syndrome. This is when you hallucinate a sensation or perception that usually wakes you up. Most of you experience this as a falling sensation, but there are a few people out there who hear gunshots, explosions, or slamming doors. 
And yes, it really is called exploding head syndrome. So of course I had to include it. A second ago when I mentioned that your brain usually paralyzes your body when you're sleeping, a few of you were rubbing your hands together in anticipation of me talking about this next one. Sleep paralysis. This is when you hear things happening in the world around you and you are conscious, but your body hasn't received the it's time to wake up signal. You are trapped in your own paralyzed body. Kind of like that terrible Hayden Christensen movie. It usually only lasts a few seconds or minutes, but it's still pretty terrifying. And now that we've finally gotten to the ones where you're conscious, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention lucid dreaming, which is when you're conscious and aware that you're dreaming. Sometimes you'll incorporate sensory input from the outside world, but not always. You might be thinking that this isn't a disorder, but it's not normal. You aren't supposed to be conscious while you're dreaming. A disorder doesn't necessarily have to be bad. Being excessively happy is a disorder. Most people who experience this usually wake up as soon as they realize that they're dreaming, but there are some people out there who try to hone their skills at lucid dreaming. Shout out to the Oneironauts. Nobody is going to the doctor over lucid dreaming, and even if you did, I doubt there are any treatments. But still, it's abnormal sleep behavior. What time is it? Oh no. No, 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 no! Come on, come on, come on! There has to be a way to get out of here. Come on, come on, please. But there is a certain type of lucid dreaming that is particularly terrifying, appropriately named night terrors. This typically involves being chased, being immobile, or being trapped in your dream, knowing that you're dreaming and being unable to wake up. Family members will see your distress, usually your heavy breathing or excessive sweating, and likewise not be able to wake you up. You will eventually wake up. This isn't an episode of Black Mirror, but still. This is different from just a bad nightmare because you are conscious. You know that you are dreaming. Almost always with night terrors, nightmares, lucid dreaming, and regular dreaming, you'll forget about it shortly after waking up. Your brain knows that it's not real, so it won't commit it to memory. But like I said before, I already made a video about dreams, so go check that out if you're interested. So the next time someone tells you, This is all just a bad dream, you'll know better. Sleeping is something that we all do, as often as possible if we can help it. And you think with as much practice as we get? Two things really quick. On Tuesday night, I'll be live streaming the State of the Union address much like I did last year. So if you'd like to discuss it and watch along while hearing my comments, set your reminders. Secondly, you probably noticed a huge jump in quality with this video, and that's because I got some new equipment thanks in part to your support on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, consider donating a dollar or two. There's a link on screen or in the description. Do you suffer from any of these disorders or want to share your experience? Let me know down in the comments and don't forget to somnambulate that subscribe button. Also be sure to follow me on Twitter and Facebook and join us on the subreddit.